this thing. Yes, we are. <laughs> were you doing the same thing I was doing, trying to say we're going live now? While the- <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Hi. Hello. How Happy winter you? solstice. Happy winter solstice. Yes, Happy indeed. so many things. You know, happy we made it through this thing. How about that? Happy. <laughs> hey, we got people. Hello, hello. Happy that we are just moving forward, making plans, and um, it could be different. So, yes, happy a bunch of things today. Yeah. Um, I want to say uh, I am so glad you're here. This is actually the first time I think that we've, like... You and I, we've never, we've never, we we speak a lot and we spend a lot of time in each other's inboxes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes we do. Yes, we do. We do. We do. We've quite a bit been, of communication. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like I've known you, girl, I feel like I've known you forever, but we've never actually had a conversation looking each other in the face. Well, we? this is the bizarre. Well, I mean, we did meetings like we did. Oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a group. Like team, me, a group thing. But, you know, it's so interesting, right? How just timing is what it is. Mm. I mean, we both were in D.C. at the same time for years. Yeah. Connected to all the same people. <laughs> we're sitting in the same room, probably next to each other a bunch of times, <laughs> but um, never really connected there. And then somehow I don't even remember when it started online. Then but we it started did. talking. You had already moved, and so had I. But it did. And then, so then we done talk like a million times, and now we're talking. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> this, you know what? And you said and before, um, divine timing, divine timing. We would have been acting a fool in, in DC if we if they had put yeah. us together. They weren't ready for that. So you got yeah. us now. Okay. We're giving mm-hmm. you a little bit of a little reprieve, but we're gonna come through once we can. Um, so this is how we start every show. Okay. Uh, I give you the floor, and we call this your 30-second commercial. We tell us, you know, who you are, what you need us to know about you, um, so we can kick this conversation off. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I am Lisa Pegram, multi-hyphenate, aka Renaissance woman. Okay, I like to say I got too many curves to fit in a box. Figured out a long time ago that I do not do one thing. So I just had to learn how to strike a balance to do the many things that I do. But what my focus is right now is amplifying the voices of black authors through um, book publishing, um, acquisition editing and uh, book marketing. And then the flip side to that coin is that I'm also a writer myself, so Mm -hmm. I'm writing work myself and also promoting the work of of other writers with a sensibility of a writer. In other words, wanting to treat other writers the way I would want to be treated, right? Which often doesn't happen. Um, And then of course, I am a hostess with the most just love to set a good table. So pretty much any experience you have with me, whether I'm teaching, whether I'm doing something that has to do with publishing, at the end of the day, you're going to end up a table and you're going to eat some food. That's just- Because I just feel like that's when things happen. There's a certain energy that comes from when you're sitting in that space. That don't happen at a conference table. That doesn't happen in a meeting. That certainly does not happen with like chart paper and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, It's when you sit down and you commune over something that tastes delicious. That um, that interesting connections come. So I'm really interested in the intersection of food as being the table that uh, facilitates all this creative stuff that I do. Yeah, because you call it what you call it, food poetry. Yes, food yes, poetry. Poetry, I love on that. The page, poetry on the plate, indeed. Yeah, poetry on the, poetry on the table. I love that. Yeah. I, I, I when I read it, I was like, "Oh, she's cute." Well, you know. She's cute. She plays with words. I really love, but I, I thought that was really dope. I feel like you should like trademark that if you can. Is Thank it a thing you. that's already out there? Thank you. Um, not that I know of. I guess I'll find out. It's now. yours now. It's yours now. We already played this. You All heard right. it well, first. You done, you done said it, and we're in a public <laughs> forum, so now we already have some type of evidence already, right? You, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> You're coining. Yes. Kitchen poetry is a Lisa Pegram thing. Yes. Go off. Yes. Yes. So you. Um, and I would say you said something earlier about how we probably were sitting right next to each other. And I was thinking to myself, no, because Lisa is a different type of Aquarius. You go places. <laughs> 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 you, 
you be outside. Every you picture I see, I be like, not. I feel like I know what that venue is, but maybe I don't. I, that's right. <laughs> no, I do not gather I'm much more. I'll be in the house. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, um, one of the things I've, I've, it's so funny because anytime I've said your name, which I bring your name up, I'll be dropping you, I'll be name dropping you. Um, okay. and whenever, anytime I've ever brought your name up, people are just like, oh, Lisa, you know, it's like, um, I've not had to check anybody about coming at you, coming at you wrong or saying anything foul about you, but you know, like, and I think that that, that speaks to, cause it's easy to, for people to accidentally um, be negative, uh, especially in our industry, like, or in the, in the arts field. Cause it's, it's, it's a, it's a race, you know, it Everything is. feels like competition. And so to have as much longevity as you have behind you and people intergener intergenerationally all um, praising your name um, and speaking so kindly of you behind your back. I think that's a testament to the high type of human you are. That's also probably why I like you so much. But I just wanted I you to know that. that. Yeah. I appreciate that. And he, and thank you for sharing that with me. You know, yeah. you have this thing about, you know, sharing flowers or whatever that people say mm -hmm. these days. I mean, it's really good to know because ultimately the things that I'm doing are all about building community. And so I would like to leave the best impression as possible with my community. I want people to feel good about the interactions they have with me. So I'm glad that that's what they say about yeah. me behind my back. And I'm glad to know that you would check somebody if they didn't come correct. Right. 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 And right. will, just so we're clear, anybody who's watching, okay? You might want to hold it. <laughs> you might want to hold it. <laughs> and apparently Donald, Donald Newton, do you know him? He says uh, the do. same thing. He said, that's what I, what I do when I hear Lisa bow. That's what I know said. that's right. Don was my first friend when I moved to Curacao. I literally met him the day oh. after I moved to Curacao. Like I arrived in the night and met him the next morning. And then he was like, we're going to do some creative shit together. And then we proceeded to do exactly that. It was Don actually okay, Don. gave me the opportunity through his uh, vacation rental company, Seaside Curacao, to start my personal chef business. I love that. Thank you, Donald. Yes, thank, you. Thank, so you, Don. thank you, Don, for that and for being here and for being such a fantastic yeah. friend. Absolutely. That's dope. That's dope, dope. So talk. All right. So let, let, let's we got so many businesses going on. I, 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 I want to I got to put them in order. And I don't even know if there's a way to do that. But mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm very interested in. Um, your role, like what you're doing now with, with book publishing. I, um, because I know so many folks, especially black mm -hmm. folks who are mm -hmm. self-publishing um, and also who are just like kind of going with people, but I don't feel like they're being protected or taken care of. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering for those folks, what would you tell them as they are looking for a publisher, as they're looking for a book publicist or like what your, um, your experience has been, which is what made you decide to do it, whatever way gets us gets us grounded in that, you know? Yes, yes. Um, well, the first thing I would say is recognize that your book process is twofold. There is the process of writing the book, and then there's the process of putting the book out into the world. And both of them are as involved and intense processes. Mm -hmm. It is so, it's such a huge, it's literally a mountain climb to finish a book, right? Mm -hmm. So by the time you get to finishing that, you just wanna like take a breath. But um, the bottom line really is, is that your book is going to perform as well as it is promoted and as well as you spend the word getting it out into the world within the first year that it's published. The problem mm -hmm. is that the publishing industry, I find, is very much like a hazing sort of system where everything is very smoke and mirrors. Nobody wants to tell you anything. Nobody really wants to give you the inside look on how the game works. So a lot of times authors lose a lot of time sort of being shuffled through a process with it, where they're feeling around in the dark. So mm -hmm. my philosophy on doing the book thing is to try to give authors as much literacy as possible about the publishing process. So the first thing I would say is we got Google, like hop online and find out like what is the process from publishing your book from start to finish. Okay. It's Cause you've got to, first you got to get a book deal with whatever mm -hmm. press that you're going to work with or decide that you're going to self publish. That would be mm -hmm. you know, two options. 
And then once your book is out into the world, you know, within four to six months before your book drops, you need to be doing the hardcore press to get the word out about your book. That means you want book reviews and blurbs. That means you want to be doing the whole social media thing, for example. Now, well, if you're new, if you're new, mm -hmm. are you just getting reviews from your peers? That's the best place to start. Like start with your network. Somebody who can speak authentically about you and your work. That would be the most important thing. The other pre-work that you can do if you're new is the biggest thing about social media is that often people think of it in terms of media, but they don't think of it in terms of the social. That's what my friend Mari always says. People forget about the social. So people are constantly posting their content online, but not necessarily spend as much spending as much time interacting with other people's content online. Uh, you yeah, need yeah. to actually be spending as much time engaging, meaning interacting, meaning commenting, reading, sharing, mm -hmm. reposting other people's stuff that find you find interesting because that's being a social person in the room not just a media person. Imagine yourself, the person that walks into the cocktail party uh -huh. in a fabulous outfit, but you dominate the entire conversation and don't let anybody else get a word in as like, edgewise, and you never ask anybody anything about yourself. So that's not gonna be about themselves. So that's not gonna leave the biggest impression. So you have the opportunity before you your book even drops to just sit down and ask yourself like, whose work do you wanna check out? Whose yeah, work do you yeah. find interesting? You know, Who in your dream world would you want to know about your book or respond about your book? And just start watching their content and responding to it. You know, Engage with people. So then when it comes time to start asking people, you're actually authentically engaged. Yeah, You've engaged in a relationship with people instead of let me just hit you up and ask you for something. You know, there's a whole you know, there's career. A whole career. For that now, for that now, it's called, it's called um, um, community community management. I can believe it because it's yeah. it's a it lot of work. Really yeah, well. it pays really well, and companies will hire someone just to go and have conversations with other people on social media. That's right. I mean, we're not people who have, let's say, and you're talking about somebody who's starting out, right? So we're not we're not even people who have like millions of followers. So you know on your social media, like who tends to like your stuff, who comments on your stuff. A lot of times it's people you don't even know. Miriam, you and I are having this conversation right now because we have people, a lot of people in common in real life, but yeah. we connected on social media. True. Like just because we were engaging with each other's com content, mm -hmm. commenting, sharing, and then ended up having like mm -hmm. DM conversations. This is how a whole relationship was made. So now yeah. when my book comes out, and I want to be like, who do I want to be a reader, right? Who in my community do I want to be a reader? You would be a person that I call. That was a relationship that was totally cultivated via social media. And pick me. So, yeah. I just <laughs> want to add that to that. And pick me. You're like, Don't by the way. I'm here because we by all here. Like, oh, and I, I would call Mary. <laughs> pick me. Well, we've already decided this is a let, let the record show kind of evening. So. <laughs> just so we're first here. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> No, I love that. I think that makes so much sense. Like, um, and sometimes, I mean, like there are the people on Instagram who have like, I guess, publishing companies. Like I follow two people that are publisher. Well, I'm not going to put up air quotes. They're publishers mm -hmm. and they very well may be ex extremely successful. I've not gone deep into their history outside of, hey, Lindsay, outside of um, social media. Right. Mm -hmm. But I don't like trap information like i don't like when you tell me like the first little bit and then you're like well i gave you that little bit now you gotta come and you gotta like either you're gonna tell me or you're not gonna tell me like just like, <laughs> like you see you know what i mean like either you're gonna tell me or you're not gonna tell me and not yeah. for nothing <clears throat> i have i would say the bulk of my incomes comes from me to, um comes from relationships i built by telling people stuff and not having and not trying to charge them and Break mm -hmm. them just to get them like in the door. Um, and I generally trust people who are free with information because they know that what they know they they deal with best. Right? Like I can give you like you just said, Google everything, right? So like I could go and I could get a ton of information and you could know all the same information, but you would know what to do with it. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because I ain't exactly. no books. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> 
Right. <laughs> you know, so, but I think that, that that's important for people to acknowledge also. So if you're if you're looking at people to publish for you, um, like use some discernment. Because some people Absolutely. just think that, yeah, some people are taking that stuff that like that they're finding on Google and turning it into social media con- uh, content. This and- is very true too. This is very true. Well, when I say, when I say Google something, I mean like Google yourself a basic steps of pub- the publishing process. That's yeah. what I mean. Like be literate is what I'm yeah. saying. Be literate in what you're dealing with um, so that when you go in, you can negotiate for yourself. Because also at the end of the day, Gone are the days when you get a publishing deal. I mean, in, in very niche circumstances, yes, but where you sign up with a publisher and you get this glamorous deal where they're whisking you all over the world on a, on a book tour, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are expected to participate in the marketing of your book yeah. a lot, a, a lot. lot. Which is why people like me are hired in addition to the majority of my clients are not self-published. These are people who have a book deal, yeah. but they want that extra bustle, you know yes. what I'm saying, on their marketing. And that's mm-hmm. really important because you have, again, like I said, you have that one year window. But the other thing too, and this is why I talked about kind of the smoke and mirrors part of it is, this is why I think it's so important to be literate because you're exactly right. You need to be able to negotiate for yourself. Yeah. And so often people are so happy to just have somebody even even consider them, right? It's just like when you learn how to rock this dating world, girl. Like you can't just be so happy to be picked that you know what I'm saying? You know, I can't really talk to you about that. You know, I'd be messing up. So you, know. you know what I'm saying? Where you're like, let me go ahead and make a bust. Let me make a let me make a feast of these crumbs. You know what I'm saying? Like you, like, like, like you got a little tiny plate with my little tiny food and my little. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like at the end of the day, and and they got it. The game gets people twisted because they forget that like mm-hmm. the authors are the people who create the product. Literally, there would be no publishing if yeah. there were not people writing the books. So you have to walk into these yeah. negotiations, understand that you want to have a little bit of bass in your voice, right? So that you can best advocate for yourself because ain't nobody out here trying to advocate for you. So that's, I mean, that's why it was important for me to kind of take on this role as well as being a writer myself, because it's like, we got to get people out here who are trying to teach people how to fish, not just slap a campaign on them. You know what I'm saying? I want you to walk away from working with me and my team. So we have a, you know, we have an outfit called Lovey Break Lit and there are three of us. And if mm-hmm. you're, you're going to come away from working with us with more literacy about not only how you marketed this book, but having talked to us about what your plans are for your next mm-hmm. book, what happens after that, so that you can move with more confidence in a world that's kind of trying to keep you out of the full game so that you can best advocate for yourself. No, I, I, I think that that's wonderful advice. And I would also say, you know, one of the things that I try to tell people all the time when I tell them to advocate and to self-advocate, because I, I champion that, I think it's really smart to know whatever room you're entering in, whether it's book publishing or you're an artist trying to book a gig or you're um, about to get a, you know, they've offered you a job, whatever the case may be. Um, also, in that, I say, also be know what you're supposed to get, which means mm-hmm. balance it. Like, be be realistic, be honest with yourself. Exactly. Like, Again, that's being literate too. Yeah, like, but yeah, so it's like, like, like yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, this is your first book. book. It's only forty this is my pages. First book and I, it's forty pages, and I got three followers on Instagram. But I'm yeah. trying to get on Oprah's favorite book. Yeah, list. like I, I need, I need, I need, I'm not telling I you to be to, small. I would never I tell to, you to be small. That's, that's no, not, but we need to manage. We need to manage expectations. Yes. Yeah, you have to manage your expectations, and you can't beat your. I think another thing is like I lost a friend behind her writing a book. Well, I mean, I guess I wasn't a friend, but I lost the homegirl. You know. The book was not for me. Like I'm completely okay. not the market. Like it is not okay. something that I would be interested in because it's just not me, right? Um, but it was. It's a very specific niche, and she, you know, is trying to sell this book. And um, and I shared it with a couple people, but they also were not necessarily right. the market, right? You know, it was like a cut off block. We ain't finna talk. You ain't buy my book. Da da da. 
And I said, did you write this book only wanting your friends to read it? Right. And the response was, well, that's who I wanted to read it most. Oh, well, honey, you could have sent that to us in a letter. Right. So I also think like when you're doing it, like, are you writing this because it's supposed to be something that's global and, and it's for this, this major audience. And it's like, are you right? Are you writing this for this little group of people that you could access differently? Like, I think that that meant like I I'm writing something, Mm -hmm. but the purpose of mine is to go into like programs, right? Right. It's a book, but it's to go in programs. At first I was writing like, yeah, people keep telling me to write a book. I'm going to go off. Right. But that wasn't, it wouldn't be, I would, I would then have to deal with like what feeling like a failure because I decided to put this thing out. That's not for, do you know what I'm saying? Right. So I, right. I say like, just know, like also know that. And then also know if you're a good writer. Yeah, this is true. This is true. And have, and the other way you can do that is also is have, I mean, you have to work with people. You have to let other people read your work. How and not like that? not like you write with somebody and then you ask your friends and then now you don't speak to your friend no more because they ain't like your book. That's not having somebody. That is engaging with like an editor, a writing coach, mm-hmm. people who are willing to actually, that you're willing to engage in a critique yeah. process with about your book. And then also again, recognizing that there's two stages to this process. There's the creative process, which includes mm-hmm. all of that that we're talking about now. And then there's the business part of it. But, but let the creative process be the creative process. Like mm-hmm. you have to be very careful about imposing the business on the creative process because you just want to create the, best, the mm-hmm. best outcome as possible. Then you have to make decisions in the business part of it, which if you look at it the way I look at it, it can also be a creative process as well. And you have to decide the things that you were talking about. Well, who is this audience? What type of book is this? This is a book, like you said, for example, to go in universities, or this is a book that I want to just go to my friends or, and then you make your choices and your decisions about what you do next with this thing that you created based on, you know, informed decisions that you make in that second part of the process. Do you edit also? I do. You do. So just so we're clear. I do. (laughs) I do. I do. I do. I do. I got you. For hire. I, I well, you know, it's interesting because when I entered publishing, you know, you got to look at the field at all the positions and decide what you want to play. I generally yeah. tend to not play one, so I have two. Um, yeah. Well, I guess two and some change. Um, so, so I was approached a lot about um, considering becoming a book agent, right? Oh, that's and that just sounds. And, yeah, well, I mean, because, you know, like I'm a people person and mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I, I have a great network and that kind of thing. But when I'm looking at the books that I'm interested in helping to get out in the world are books by mm-hmm. underrepresented people, stories, underrepresented stories. And so do mm-hmm. I really want to be the person knocking on the door, trying to convince the person behind the door to acquire this book? Mm-hmm. Or do right. I want to be the person on the other side of the door to say yes? Mm-hmm. Right. So when you look at the fact that you've got to find somewhere for your, a home for your book, you have to find an editor to work with to get your book up to its top form. Mm -hmm. And then once that book comes out in the world, it has to be promoted. Otherwise it's like a tree in the forest that fell, right? With nobody to hear it. Mm -hmm. So the two positions I chose is to be the person who is behind the door saying, yes, you want to publish your book. And then once the book comes out to help you get it out into the world. I'm here for that. Yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. Love, 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 love that. So how much of that, how much of your time is committed? To, uh, hey, Nina, can you see the comments? Can I see the comments? I yeah, you it, make sure you're not in the private chat and that you're in the Oh, comments. I am in the private chat. Oh, no, now I can see the comments. <laughs> oh, look at all these people. Look at Enzo is up in here. Wait a minute. We've been been here for 20 minutes and we haven't even raised a glass. What are you drinking? Is what I want to know. A little bit of uh, a a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey with um, some ginger beer. I Uh, used that dark and spicy. Remember, I told y'all I was running around. Dark and spicy. And this thing is doing what it's supposed to do. Well, that's my (laughs) that's my thing though. Something dark and brown with some ginger beer, or yeah, that's that's the move Mm -hmm. right there. Why is that? 
that's usually my move. I'm, I usually keep it pretty simple. I have it neat, uh-huh. but I felt like I had to be festive because, you know, I, know, I, I see was spray with stuff. you. It's the holiday season and all that. So I made a little, I made some sorrel. Oh. So I got some fresh sorrel, which I brewed in the sun, the hibiscus first, oh, and then it was ginger and cinnamon and all those other kind of things. Mm. Then I got a little splash of that El Dorado rum. I know Don Newton knows about that rum. That's my daddy's favorite rum. It's El Dorado. I want this. I Yours is tell you about this rum. <laughs> it's El Dorado rum that my daddy loves. And, and he taught me, well, he taught me about it. It's from, I want to say it's from Guyana, where they grow the Demerara sugar. So like the sugar hit different because they make the rum with that Demerara sugar. So yeah, that's what I that's what I'm, I'm sipping a- on this evening, saying cheers to all these got all these people in the chat. Yeah, look, I'm gonna tell you what I did say. I said if she show up on this chat um, with the beach behind her, we clicking off. <laughs> <laughs> so I take this little fancy drink. So but the longest I was gonna night of the year. The longest night of the year. <laughs> It's dark outside, so I couldn't well, give I, you. The, I, I couldn't give you all the turquoise, honey. Oh, good. Not tonight, Thank cause, you. Because you hit me at nighttime. Amen. <laughs> um, Lindsay, I think that's rosemary. Is that rosemary coming out the cup? I can see that would be rosemary. Yes, that's you know, a I know my herbs <laughs> That's a rosemary. You want to take a little hint? You want to just place your your rosemary or your mint or whatever you're popping your drink in your palm before you put it in there and just pat it like this couple times that releases the releases the oils and essences you can get a little bit more of the flavor in there cheers she everybody she be doing, she be doing the whole she extra fancy absolute most I and, and i love everything about it look don't ever be different <laughs> let me say that can we just say don't ever be different That's oh right. and you know i learned about the um with the i ain't smacking I, I i just was breaking and twisting but i guess i'm gonna be patting now um because i gotta level up um the <laughs> basil Yes, and ma'am. And how it will help you to relax. Yes. I um. Someone was like a while ago, and I, I have been adding basil as uh when I do like sleep tea, you mm-hmm. know. But I was it's always with a bunch of other things. So I was thinking like when she, you know it it can't be that potent on its own. But I have I can attest to um breaking a stem of basil mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and it calming my anxiety. That's right. Well, when you think about like when you're making a mojito, right, and you muddle it, all mm-hmm. that's doing is just that's some real intense releasing yeah. of all that. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. good stuff. It needs a little, little, little contact uh-huh. <laughs> in one way, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah. Amen for contact. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's right. look, ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with a little contact. Okay, so it is. We look. I want to talk to you more about your work. I also want to talk about the winter solstice. I also want to talk about. I want to find out if you if you did any. Um, you ain't got to tell us what, but if you did any rit- ritualing for this moon, mm-hmm. I did not. Okay, okay, that's interesting that you say that because I did not either. I mean, you know, I lit a couple. I got some, I got some little candles lit over here. Yeah, got some, yeah. Got some little. I can't hear see you. See, I got some candles. And I got a little fruit popping yeah. over here. You know, I got a little something. <laughs> But not anything like the flame, you know? You know, you know, I'm burning a little, you know, it's the holidays. I'm burning a little frankincense and myrrh up in here. You know what I'm saying? But um, but as far as like serious uh solstice thing, you know, this year has just been a lot. And so I've been really leaning into, and because I'm one to do the most, I've been uh-huh. really leaning into giving myself permission to like not do the most. Like yeah. Maybe lead lead with, I don't feel like it. And if that's the case, then I just don't do it. And I'm kind of finding a celebration mm. in that moment when I decide to just not yeah. do it, right? I did buy um, some plates I didn't need. Oh, okay. I have an obsession with ornate plates. Well, you know, you ain't got to tell me. About how yeah, I know that's why I'm that's why I'm telling you. Better. I know you would know. Yes. So like yes. I went and I bought, I was looking for um something to like not a coat rack, but you know, coat hooks. Like the hooks. Mm-hmm. I was looking for hooks. So I went to like the the thrift store or whatever, and they had this gorgeous like plum set. Mm. And I oh. like to mix. I, I'm planning to host a dinner in the new year. I don't know if, when or whatever, but I'm planning to host a dinner in the new year. Mm. You know, he always has to check in and say hello. 
Hello. Say hello. You ain't got no clothes Happy on. Happy holidays, you dear. Got your, you got your chest out. Oh, I <laughs> They're going to see your chest. Bye. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's why he got a chi. always got to say hello. Um, Hannah, you haven't seen him in a long time. He's big, huh? Wait, Hannah, you haven't ever seen them. I think I was pregnant when I was working with you. Um, but yeah, so I uh, I bought these plates. And I think that what I want to do is like this mix match kind of. Um, I love a mix match on the table now. I love a mix match on the table. Yeah. I mean, I got to get a little symmetry, you know what I'm saying? But I love a mix match on the table. Now. I feel like oh, it's yeah. my thing. <laughs> oh, and here's the other thing that I learned from, um, what was, what's the sister's name? I think it's Madame de la Maison. She's on Instagram. Oh, revelation, honey, about how you don't have to iron your tablecloths. Because, you know, I had a grandmama that had me up in there ironing tablecloths and napkins. And this lady was like, you do not have to iron your tablecloth. You can put it on well, there. Right like yes. And I was like, I was like, oh, my goodness. Clutch the pearls. You can't put the linen on the table wrinkle. But girl, she laid that table out so nice. It was almost like the wrinkles just gave it texture. She was like, when oh. you put that beautiful food on the table and your drinks and you're sitting around there with your guests, if you have somebody who's looking at your table like this tablecloth ain't iron, something wrong with them. They shouldn't be there. That's so true. She just leaned into the wrinkles. The napkins were wrinkled. The tablecloth was wrinkled. <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, this is about to be my jam right here. Yeah, so because I can't stop on. It's like it's like the it's like the bed head of table setting. Yeah, yeah. The, only, the only thing I iron are tablecloths. I don't iron clothes. You know what I'm saying? I, oh, I definitely don't iron no clothes. I ain't iron no clothes since I was told to by my parents as a child. I, I probably have an inner thing, but I'll do the table because I want it to look nice. But now mm -mm, she took those wrinkled up napkins, girl, and pushed them through a napkin ring. I said, wait a minute, look at the little dimensions on the. Again, she, this like effortless. Like was she an elder? No, she's like no, she ain't an elder. She's like I was gonna say an elder. If an elder did it, then I definitely am doing it. No, she no, she so the elbow elders whispered in her ear and told her, Don't worry about it, waste no time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I yes. Say, oh, blah, girl. But I, what I loved about that is the idea that you can really, you can, a lot of times people don't want to do the extra because they're like, oh, it's doing too much and it's too much energy. But you can spend a little extra time and make things beautiful, yeah. you know? And I feel like that across the, I feel like that across the board. Now, I'm going to say this. So, you know, as a, as artists, this is going, I mean, I know we're kind of jumping around going from you know, real life back to art, but it is what it is. Um you're a performance poet. Do you get you get to read your poetry? Do you, or yeah, you I do have I do have a history. I did have a chapter of my life as a performance poet. I am still a poet and okay. um, very much still writing poetry, and I read my poetry. But I haven't been in the spoken word world for for years now, and was doing so more in terms of being an educator and like being the coach of the Brave New Voices team okay. and you know, working with Writers Corps and stuff. Yeah, boss, boss, cute, cute Beyonce, boss. I need to, I need, I need like sounds. Um, <laughs> but no, but I will tell you, you know, I'm going to grab my singing bowl real quick. <laughs> the frequency just you popping wait. Just you wait. Season two is coming and it's going to be a level up, guys. I'm going to have sound. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but look, let me say. So I was thinking, um, you know, like this was before, like the whole sec. The what is this variant number twelve came out um, yeah. when when the world was opening back up again. And I was thinking about like, okay, in order to host safe a safe space mm -hmm. um, that is profitable, like you're gonna have to go hard on creating atmosphere and environment way more than you would have before to mm -hmm. so that people forget that they're in a yeah. COVID safe space. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And, yes. I was, and I, so I was imagining like, what does that look like in like these intimate, you know, smaller venues, you know, like cabaret style things, stuff like that. Like the, the idea of like hanging curtains and, um, doing, you know, full on sensory in, in spaces with the, the, uh, all the stuff. And I was like, I, 
is it is it worth it? Because you have to, in order to, you're going to have to do it, right? Right. Um, unless you want your audience to be in a space and the whole time they're thinking, I hope this person doesn't cough on me, right? Right. So is it worth it in this time to figure that out? Do you think? I mean, you know, I probably, I am not a total COVID hermit, but I probably err on the side of conservative as far yeah. as being out and about. And I have the luxury of living in a place that is summer year round, which means that everything I go to if I am out and about is outdoors. You know, that makes things a lot easier. But um, as far as like how to maneuver around, luckily, I, you know, I have a personal chef business, which definitely took a hit yeah, during, yeah. Um, during COVID big time. Um, but I've been leaning, what I've been more interested in is encouraging people to create those spaces at home. Right? Nina, like, Nina. so what's Nina talking about? Come on, oh, Amber, 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 up in here. Perform in back of a year if you're down to experiment. Well, you know, that's the other thing is like, now that, she, now that Nina's saying that, and hey, Nina, yeah, people are yeah. always going to gather. So the other thing too is like, how do we engage with these larger spaces? That's the other thing is like, how do we shift a paradigm so that larger spaces are lending their spaces to be used for a smaller capacity? Like she's saying, if you got an amphitheater, but you got people spread out, mm -hmm. right? That, that more that you, we, we look at having intimate experiences in intimate spaces, but it, mm -hmm. perhaps we need to also consider because we want to distance creating, looking at how to create an intimate experience in a bigger space. And I love the idea of outside theater, yes. outside art, outside theater, outside performance. It, I, it makes me, it, I was into that before COVID. Yeah. So, you know, uh, just in some institution are holding out, building outdoor spaces. Outdoor spaces, spaces and thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. I think I heard somebody, especially in New York, I heard there's been a lot of, and Nina can probably speak to this. There's mm -hmm. been a lot of outdoor stuff going on um, extending sort of the year for things that are happening, like in parks and things like that. I mean, you know, you can put on your scarf and your boots and your, you know, and your, you know, I, I think this notion of getting outdoors is also not the worst thing for our society that has been indoors before the pandemic more than, than we probably should have, like pushing us to get outside. Remember when you were little and it would be cold and yeah. you, would still, you would still be like, come inside. So but it's also weird. Like it's all, there's also like a lot of rule. Like I, I worked a, yes. um, a show in a garden like two years right before COVID started, and they wouldn't let me wear my take my shoes off. Yeah, and I was like, I can't be in grass without my with my shoes on. I got to right. take the shoes off. And they were like, Yeah, also danger. <laughs> 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 like we're not paying for what I, like you step it off. <laughs> like it's my job. I don't even know what to do with that. I don't Can even I sign a that. waiver? <laughs> Can I sign a waiver to walk barefoot in the garden? All right now. I was like, I don't understand. But then I thought about it and I was like, you know what, legitimately as a as a producer, you're absolutely yeah. right. I put my shoes yes. on and stop playing. There's tons of stuff around. But I was in grass. And I'm one of those. Yeah. Yeah, I'm an earthing, grounding kind of girl too. I'm definitely, definitely not going to have my shoes on most of the time. Did we freeze? Am I the one frozen? Let me see. Am I the one frozen here? I feel like I have. Are you there? Okay, I feel like there's, can someone stay in the chat if you guys can hear me? I can't tell if I'm the one who's frozen or I see a live icon. And uh, so if someone can write in the chat, if you're hearing me right now, I'll just talk to y'all in the chat until, okay, until Marion gets back. All right. Thank you, DP. Thank you, Nina. 
All right. Well, happy holidays, everybody. There are so many inspirational, wonderful people on here. So if you guys don't know, not everyone do I know, but the folks I know on here are Enzo Silent Surin, who is a fantastic poet and publisher. We're talking about publishing here. So um, founder of Central Square Press and the newly coming Faraday Press, fantastic poet whose book, um, When My Body, when My Body Was a Clenched Fist, is winning all kinds of accolades. So you should check out Enzo, y'all. If you don't know about Enzo, this is a brother who is really writing beautiful work and empowering writers, publishing writers from BIPOC communities in really beautiful ways. We got Nina Angela Mercer, another fantastic writer and academic and educator in the house from New York. If you guys don't know Nina, check her out, find her and see what she's doing. We got Daryl Purry, who is just the Renaissance man, and my brother from another mother, who is the lawyer, the poet, the beatbox, beatbox extraordinaire, father of champion girls. There's just so many beautiful people on here. I really appreciate you all taking your time during your holidays to come hang out. So I guess I'm giving a little soliloquy here. Um, Miriam asked me, I'm going to make the best use of this time because I think she's probably going to show up eventually. So um, Miriam asked me to share later, I'll just do it now, um, with what I have coming up next. So I'll tell y'all about that um, for the coming year. Uh-oh, there she is. Are you back? I am back. Let me tell y'all something about Cox Communications. <laughs> I apologize. I thought I was the one on third world Wi Fi. No, no, girl, you know, I'm in New Orleans. You know, this whole city third world. So okay. I was on here. Okay, here we go. Um, but in the best way, you know, I know New Orleans. I'm like, damn, did something go on? And I hear my neighbors, like, come on, man, Wi Fi again. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I was like, I hope, I was like, at least it ain't just me. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm a, but I did, I did um, put into my, I did not do ritual for this, this full moon, but I did put into my list of manifestations that somebody gifts me a space to mm. host this um, vlog so that I don't have to worry about um, mm -hmm. cop not giving a damn about Holly Grove. Yes, indeed. So, and I did, so I'm going to let you go ahead and finish because you are supposed to be telling the folks where to find you and what you got going on. Yes. Um, so I would say the first, the best place to find me is on Instagram by far. So that's at, at Lady Peacock. I'll try to put that in the chat somewhere. Is that what that says, Peacock, girl? Yes, it is. P-C-O-Q. Yes, that's from my band days. You know, speaking of Daryl Purry, who I have been doing, talk about spoken word. Daryl and I were in Generation 2000 together, spoken word poetry collective back in the It's Your Mug days. And then um, I eventually had my own band, Lady Peacock. So that's where that comes from. And the plumes. So DP was one of the cherished plumes. Um, and so from performing with the band all those years, I mean, I find that people will call me LP, Lady P, more than they call me Lisa. So it's just the recognizable name. And so that's where the, that's where Lady Peacock comes from. Yeah. So you can find me on Facebook. Yes. But certainly on IG. That's where I spend the most time. I'm just going to be honest. Um, if you DM me on Instagram, I will see it. If you email me, it might get buried in the blizzard. So I'm going to recommend you follow me on Instagram if you like. And um, DM me if you're interested in any of the stuff I have going on. Miriam, while you were gone, I was going to just talk a little bit what I have coming on for, for coming up for this year. Um, so I am going to be doing a book publicity campaigns with Levy Break Lit, which is officially launching in the new year. So if you have a book coming out or you are looking for advice, um, what we talked about earlier about learning more about the publishing industry, hit me up about that. Just DM me and tell me that you want to talk about publishing or you have a book coming out and you want to talk about um, getting the word out about it. I'm going to be acquiring six books this year for Jaded Ibis, Ibis Press, which is a fantastic uh, indie press out of San Diego. So, And I'm looking for all genres, poetry, fiction, nonfiction. So if you have a fantastic manuscript that you would be interested in letting me check out, Again, I'm just gonna tell everybody to hit me up in that IG DM because that's where you can most easily find me. So if you've got a manuscript ready to go or you're almost there and you'd like some feedback on it, you can hit me up about acquiring your book. 
I am also launching the Sweet Pea Word Studio this coming new year, which is the place that will house all of the support work that I do. So writing coaching, and that includes if you're a writer or you want to be writing more and you want to, you know, accountability or you want to kind of get your mojo going, get a jump start, get your momentum going, start working on a project anywhere from just wanting to have a more regular practice all the way to actual book coaching is what I do in the Sweet P Word Studio, as well as um, virtual writing salon groups and pairings with partners if you want to have an accountability partner. So I look at all these amazing artists that I'm working with, and I'll pair you up with somebody to, uh, to get feedback from for your work. And then I'm doing an extension of the program that I ran years ago at the Smithsonian. The Shakti Brigade is Ekphrasis Poetry Workshops. And so that's poetry based on visual art. And I run those workshops virtually every season. So we'll have our winter workshop in February. I post about all this stuff on my IG so you'll know about it. But if you're interested in that workshop, hit me on the DM and I'll get you the information. We write about visual art um, that was created by BIPOC artists. And then we have a Sunday virtual tea party where we share our work and times when we are lucky, we have even had um, our the artists whose work we've focused on join us for a conversation. So that's that's a pretty cool workshop. And then I'll be hosting conversations for um, and poetry readings for the American Poetry Museum. And in June, I'll be hosting the book club for the National Museum of the Women in the Arts. So if you're interested in book publishing. If you want to get somebody to look at your manuscript that's done, if you want help jumpstart your writing, just hit me up on the DM. Let me know what you're interested in, and I will send you to the right direction. I came back to ask you to repeat the the name of the um, the poetry, the visual art work went went to work the visual art workshop. What's that's called name? that's called the Shakti Brigade workshop. Is that S H A? S H A K T I. Oh, let me be specific that that workshop is specifically for women. <clears throat> okay. Workshop. So that's the Shakti Brigade um, Ekphrasis workshop. So that's poetry and visual art. And that's just, you get a challenge in February. I no. send out a pat challenge, you work on it on your own. And then we all come together on a Sunday and have tea together and share what we uh -huh. wrote and look at the art. All right, did I hit your notes proper? I think I did. It looks like it to me. Yeah. I, I think I feel like I got it all in there. You got Sweet it all key, in there. Keyword studio. Then we've got the Shakti Brigade. We also know you're you're taking you're taking six books in. Taking six books. Although I have to, I have to admit that no, actually I'll, I'm looking at four because I've got, I've already got two kind of on the burner. So, mm -hmm. so if you got some work, send it to me. Even if it's not done yet, if it's almost done, but you feel like you want to have somebody um, look at it, I am interested in all genres, including poetry. Some people shy away from it, but I'm definitely interested in stories though that are written by for and or about um, people from communities of color or underrepresented communities is what I'm interested in. All right. What about your um, your personal chefing or your private chef? Is, is that something like if people tra happen to travel to Europe, to the island, they can- Yes. So yeah, I them. offer a private chef service. So you can you can contact me if you're traveling to St. Martin, which I which is where I'm located now. Um, I'm also gonna be looking at doing some pop-up dinners this year. And the long-term plan for the food is also for me to be doing some culinary and writing retreats. So mm -hmm. invite y'all down to the island and come eat some food and get your words on. So that's the long-term goal. Um, but for right now, if you're here on the island, you can hit me up about chef service. And I'm also going to do a cookbook dive content wise. I have all these cookbooks and I'm so excited. Also specifically focused on food from the diaspora. So I'm going to be every month diving into my cookbooks and trying out recipes. So they're not just sitting here. So I'm going to start with my cookbooks, move all the way through my shelves with the books and then you know, I don't know if y'all are like me, but I swear I'd be saving these recipes online like nobody's business. Like, oh, I got to try this. I got to start moving through all these recipes. So over the course of next year, I'm just going to 
invite you all to come along with me as I cook my way through all this stuff that I keep <laughs> all this stuff that I keep saving. <laughs> I don't know how to cook from recipes. I'm not big on it either, but my dad is the one who taught me really the foundation of cooking and my dad is a yeah. big recipe person. But the thing I love about recipes, I just take recipes as like a suggestion. You know, right, right. and I'll do it the way the recipe says it more or less the first time. And then if I really like it, then I make it my own. I really yeah, just yeah. kind of think of recipes as guidelines, right? Yeah. Otherwise, if you get I, too precise with it, I you know. And all the people that I fun. want that I want to write recipes don't ever write them. Like you be putting up all kind of food and don't ever tell us what what it is, how to do it. That will come. <laughs> I be like, that's pretty. It will come. It I will, would consider not eating meat for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh and then I'm like, man, but she didn't tell me what it is. Going to go back to the steak. <laughs> it did, it did, it did. So you you were, go ahead. That's a good. That's a good question. What would be the first thing if you were if you were cooking for someone and you were trying not necessarily trying to steer them towards, you know, veganism, but if you were if they were interested and they said, hey. Mm -hmm give me a first deep dive what would it be i think people just put too much pressure on it honestly i think Good. you do i mean i think i think the first way to start doing it is just to start eating less meat you know i think it's about coming to i'm not a hardcore anything mm -hmm. right i eat mostly plant-based mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but if you catch me on the right day and that steak is looking right i'm gonna have it Oh. Um, and, and, and I will never not eat anything that comes out of the sea. Cause that's just my jam. Like yeah. whenever I've had any other dietary restrictions, you will never get me to turn away an oyster, a lobster or whatever. But I think it's just, yeah, the notion of, of shifting away from thinking that the meal has to have some kind of meat protein to be a complete meal. Yeah. My son was watching this thing, um, the other yesterday on YouTube and it was like, most expensive foods or something like that. And it was based, I guess, on how dangerous they were. And it was a seafood. It was, it's a mollusk. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but you only can find it off the coast of whatever. It's like to uh, Spain, I want to say, mm -hmm. and one other place, but it looks like if a clam had a tail, do you know what I'm talking about? I wonder if it's, and is it the big one? I wonder if it's an abalone. It's like this big. And the way they serve is they cook it up and you pick it up by the, the little clam part and you just eat the meat that's hanging off it. Okay. Um, but they said it's like the most dangerous thing ever to get to and that people die, like five people die a year trying to harvest these things. Mm -hmm. um, and that like you, that like half a pound is a hundred and some odd dollars. I think it's abalone. Yeah, abalone. I think it's abalone, yeah. And it, it looks like a like a finger with a clam mm -hmm. head. Mm -hmm. I was like, I had never heard of it before. Um, I don't know. I, I just wanted to share that because I had never seen it before. And I was thinking to myself, am I finna die? Would I die to go harvest these things? Um, <laughs> <laughs> would I die? That's initially what I thought. Would I, like, would I, I die? die? That's a whole new criteria. That's a whole new criteria. <laughs> and then, like, mm -hmm. would I eat it knowing that people died? Right, right. You place a lot of pressure on this. And it better be good. Don't you feel pressure to say it's good? Like, how could you say it's not? How could you not, right? Knowing what somebody went through to get it for you. You're just going to like it. You, know? you got to like it. You're going to like it. I don't even it. think it's pretty. I, my food has to be. I, I'm not really into ugly yeah. food. Yeah. So like if it's and it's not pretty, it looks like a finger, like like a nub, whatever. <laughs> I was watching, but when I heard, <laughs> you know, I have to check to see what this boy watches because he he comes in here way smarter than me all the time because he watches these shows. He loves National Geographic, mm -hmm. um, you know, all these like sciencey things, and he'll be like, "Hey, mom, did you know that the such and such of the who who was like a ba 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 ba?" And I'm like, "You know, I didn't know that." When you no, I didn't know that. <laughs> Is that a rhetorical question? Is the response? You were clear I didn't know that before you walked in the room, and here you are. Thanks. Right. <laughs> what? But I was watching that, and you made me think of it because I do. I'm a seafood head. Like I love yeah. anything that comes out of the sea, man. I swear I'm a mermaid, so I'm like, I think I might be a carnivorous mermaid because I will never. 
I will never kick seafood out of bed, not even not a one time. I don't think I ever have. But I think, but I think, yeah, I think it's this notion also that that people aren't super creative about food that's not meat. That's true. Often, or don't know how to sort of enter. Again, that's here true. we go about this literacy about just like a basic vocabulary oh, no. that you can start playing yeah. with. Because once you learn that you can fry up oyster mushrooms just like you fry up chicken, like I mean, I've heard, I heard that. And I wasn't really convinced in the way it was explained to me. But I will tell you that, like, I th you're right. Because, like, I'm from North Carolina. I know how to cook North Carolina mm -hmm. food. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I know how to cook. I know how to make sides and greens and and all of that stuff. When I came to New Orleans, I mean, if, even when I went to New York, I was like, I don't know how not, all of this stuff with the West Indian, Caribbean, all that flair y'all got going on, y'all. I'm going to just buy it. Same thing in D.C. D.C., well, I don't know if really D.C. has, like, a... What's a DC staple other than mambo sauce? I mean, what's Isn't that what you're from? Crab. Not crab. Yeah, but that's, not, but that's not hard to make. I mean, like, what's a thing that you won't find anywhere else other than like going to DC? Oh, a thing that you wouldn't find anywhere but DC. That's a, that's a mm, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, like, yeah, I'm thinking, like I'm, I just keep thinking about crab, crab cakes. Yeah, I, 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 I automatically people. think about crab too because of Maryland and the Chesapeake. But, but when I just think about specifically DC, of course, you know that mambo sauce is the first thing that comes to mind. But the only yeah. reason why I'm having a hard time isolating is because you know, so many people from, people from DC, their people come from the South. So you're really talking about mm -hmm. a lot of DC food at the end of the day being, you mm -hmm. know, from folks, they're, they're folks from North yeah. Carolina. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. To isolate something to be specifically DC is kind of difficult because we know. Yeah, that's so like, what I, know, I, Philly, I, I would. I, I would always say Philly has the best Italian food. I love Italian food in Philly. Mm -hmm. The barbecue in North Carolina. You like? I they say Texas Chaplin's go to bar the barbecue in North Carolina. <laughs> um, but I, when I think about DC, DC has the best China buffets. They be turned. Yeah, DC is. DC is <laughs> I, <laughs> I did my birthday at a China buffet. Because <laughs> 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 they put crab on the buffet. <laughs> yes. Yes. You don't do we that anywhere. Do, we do some crab, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, I burnt some coral last night coral, frankincense, and um, rosemary to clear mm -hmm. off my the area around my house. I'm not joning, Nina. I'm being for real. I was, <laughs> Nina, let me say you're joning. <laughs> I, was, I was there for 10 years and I can't come up with what I think is like a staple. And I feel bad about that. Like, I feel like maybe I didn't have, maybe I didn't indulge enough in DC culture. I think, yeah, no, I think, I think it's just, it's because we're, the, we're, oh, shrimp oh, But see, again, shrimp that's, that, that, again, this, 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 the rib pit, y'all going there? You gonna talk about the rib pit? Now you going up to up there? All right, so you gonna talk oh, about the rib pit? You gonna talk about twin dragon? You gonna talk about twin dragon? Okay. Which is, the only place I know, which, which is the only place I know where you can get straight up egg foo young that tastes like somebody grandmama in Mississippi made it. I love egg foo young. I just ordered egg foo young. Yeah, that's twin dragon. Oh, yes, that's <laughs> some DC food, but. I don't know if those dishes are specifically. Yeah, I don't think they you are. You just have so many, so many hybrid. But so I appreciate people. you holding your city down, Nina. I really do. I think I, it is commendable that you rocking with them like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we gonna we gonna hold our city down yeah. hard. Period. Yeah, I, no I matter what, I see we hold our city down like we hold down Marion Barry. Okay, we'll rock like, all day, like, every day. <laughs> like like Benita Betrayal holds down Miss Jenkins, honey. But now nobody say nothing about. Miss Jenkins. Nobody okay, say nothing nobody me. better not say nothing about no DC baby. Mm -mm. Not in my presence. Not in my presence. It'll never be. Right. <laughs> never <I'll> be. <laughs> oh. oh, but wait. Well, I was telling you, I was burning some stuff last night, right? And my neighbor came out and was like, "Ah, that stuff stinks so bad. I don't want to. That's why we don't ever come outside." And I was like. I know, cause y'all mean. This like this is specifically to keep y'all in the house. 
Then it works. Then it works. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> Woo! Thank you for confirming. <laughs> yes, <indeed. laughs> and there you have it. There and there you have it. Mm-hmm. All oh, right. I so want to thank to... you. I want to thank you. Speaking of burning okay. things, by the way, I want to thank you to hipping me to burning the sage and the Palo Santo in your locks after you wash them. I was yeah. like, why did I never think of that before? I saw you did that on Instagram. I was like, oh, this is this is the revel. This is a revelation. So thank you yeah. for that one. And I'll tell you, you know, I've been veiling. I know y'all have been seeing me with these wigs and stuff lately. Um, I've been veiling because I've had, um, I don't want to say misfortune, but I've had some folks come at my neck, you know, I, mm-hmm. um, in the last the last year. I think that um, I got I went quiet. And then um, thank you for being here, Enzo. Thank you, Enzo. Um, thank you. I went quiet and then I came back winning. Right. Which is something that I do very well consistently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the response to these wins this time was really tough. Like folks actually trying to take me out the game. Mm-hmm. And so I've um, been veiling to protect myself. Um, so it's not just about being fine. I mean, I've got a head full of hair underneath here. It's really been about blocking people being able to enter and exit mm-hmm. um, or leave me with things that I don't want or to um, or manipulating me into thinking negatively about myself. Right. Mm-hmm. And I find when I keep my head covered, um, it's let it, it the the stimuli, the external stimuli mm-hmm. bounces away, it goes away. Um, but I have also been very intentional about when I come home um, before I lay to go to bed, doing that, smudging my head, my 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 scalp and my head. And um, I've been I made a rosemary oil that I've been using um, to help me rest and to keep to to offer me protection and things like that. And I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I'm really excited about, well, you know, I'm turning 40. I, I know to, this is, you had to say this cause you said this was your, your, your countdown to 40, yeah, you're right, starting like, to count down to 40 today. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yeah, I'm getting into it. yeah. Yeah. Like I'm starting, I'm, it's not the exact 40 to 40, but I'm like, I'm getting into it. Cause I know, yeah. um, I was going to be, I'm going to be on the road on my actual 40, 40, but I'm, I'm, I'm planning things and I'm feeling very, um, young. Mm-hmm. And sexy and smart and um and dangerous and feminine and yeah, you couldn't pay me to be 20. Uh, never like I just don't want to go it's back. Not I'm not even I saying anything bad going. negative about it, but it's just yeah, it's like I'm people on have it, so you know? many feelings about getting older as no, if it's something I'm, that you I'm, have to I'm, grapple I'm, with. Mm-hmm. And I would no, just say just 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 bask, just bask in it. Even look at right the awareness, and I think this is a really good um emblem as we're closing out and starting this new year of your awareness around what was happening when people were being negative around you. Oh, right. And another time that, it, you know, you might just be completely reactive or be trying to spend a lot of energy process mm-hmm. that pressing that processing that, but mm-hmm. now moving into a space where you are just constantly mm-hmm. raising the vibration so that you, yeah. that you protect yourself in a way that you don't have to, give your energy away in that way that you are just yeah. protecting yourself let people move how they're going to but yeah. that you are intentional about protecting yourself and continuing to and continuing to move forward right yeah i think that's I a find- really good good that's a really good thing to think about mm-hmm. um especially during this time right now ending one year and in, into another in general but in this time that we're living in right now in this new chapter that you're opening moving into your 40s right in like this in a different kind of grounded, rooted, in your flow kind of space. That yeah. notion about not being, not swaying in other people's wind, but being in a space now where you can really, that you can create that force field around yourself so that you don't, you're not yeah. um, held hostage by this energy from other people, I think is, yeah. is a really important takeaway. 
I love that you said that, 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 that don't feel, I don't feel hostage to anything. I mean, remember I, I, I sent you a message earlier and I said, I'm, you know, mm-hmm. I'm probably closing my business and my bit I've had, I've been working for myself for 14 years, but this year allowed me the opportunity to say, I have worked for myself for 12, 14 years. And I now believe I have the skills mm-hmm. to instead support someone or something else that relieves me of the pressure of running a business. Yes. I'm, you know, I believe I'm extremely marketable and I could earn a really good living and put myself in a position to buy this house. My son keep talking about he won't and all these other things. Um, but I don't feel tied to any decision. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's one of the things I I was thinking about when I was younger, like, what am I going to be when I'm 40? How am I going to know? And I'm here and I'm like, girl, I don't know. Right. But it's amazing right. because everything I do is amazing. I'm here right now and I'm doing what I do right now. I see yeah. Lacey said here in the in the comments, I was a fighter over nothing. <laughs> and it, you know what I'm saying? Yes. You think about how much energy you spend, how much oh, yeah. try, you're trying to figure out exactly how to say it, how to respond, the sleep that you lose. The, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That when you reach a point in your development, whether that be an age or whether that be just wherever you are, your evolution, where you'd be like, yeah, you know, what did I say earlier when you asked me about the ritual? I was like, mm, I didn't feel like it. I ain't doing it. I didn't feel like it. Right. I'm not doing it. It happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I was like, I went to sleep. <laughs> That's right. I ain't even see the moon this time around. Mm-hmm. I only I, <laughs> 40 feels good. I, it does. Your I'm getting healthier. Great. I'm intentionally having care about myself. I'm, oh, and I'll tell you. Can we give a I'm, shout out to the ladies 40? Oh, and not just the ladies. Yeah, everybody, everybody 40 and everybody over. Everybody 40 and over. I don't know everybody if you're fair. Everybody 40 and over. over but, oh, something about being 40 just turning oh, yeah. people on. I'm here oh, for yeah. it. I love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's I'm juicy. It's just that 40. That 40, honey. This is that 40. It's right, different. <laughs> All right, y'all. It has been another Tribe Talking on a Tuesday with, you, with Miriam. And today we had Lisa Pegram. I'm so excited to see you. I'm so excited to spend time with you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, y'all read the comments. I tried my best to uh, to to note the, thing, the, the gems dropped and the ways to get in contact. And um, information about what she has going on in the coming year. Um, I will be updating you all soon on what I have coming up in the co- coming year that I'm most certain about. And um, and we'll go from there. So I appreciate all y'all being here. <laughs> oh, and like I said, I am manifesting a space outside of my um, my home to do these. Plant them so seeds. Plant them seeds. Set them in you know. today. All right. So I'm putting that out there. But um, I appreciate you all for being here. Lisa, thanks you for holding it down when the signal went out. And, Thank you for um, having me. We'll talk to y'all soon. Love. You.